Welcome back to the final part of our series on seven ontological arguments for the existence of God. In this video, we're going to be offering some final thoughts on the ontological argument, and I'm going to be going through kind of a generic version of the ontological argument and some general problems in case you encounter a new ontological argument that doesn't quite fit into one of these categories. It'll give you a sense of some ways that you might object to it, or you might be worried about it, be skeptical about it, or raise some doubts. Let's take a look. So, the ontological argument. It's proof of God's existence from pure reason alone, and that is the basic problem with all the ontological arguments. While the ontological arguments are often quite valid, they're rarely sound. One need not show that they're logically incorrect, merely that the premises or the world views that they rely on are unfounded. And perhaps they're not unsound, but it doesn't seem that the premises are as powerfully substantiated or justified as the proponents of these arguments would like you to think. The key is going to be to go in and question those premises and see on what points they rely on. In order to get a good understanding of how one would do this, we're going to take a look at a generic ontological argument that kind of encompasses some of the main problems of a lot of the ontological arguments that exist. So they often begin with a complex logical claim that's disguised as a common statement whose implications are going to be unclear, where it seems like something we would generally accept, but it's in fact a much more complicated logical point, and it's not clear what the implications of this claim are from the outset. We also often include a strange or oversimplified version of an esoteric philosophical position. These are Clearly things like the Mignonian or the Mariological ontological argument, but also more common things like the use of S5 in the modal ontological argument. These are philosophical positions that we might not generally accept, but we don't know much about, so we might take them for granted as being acceptable, or that this is a substantial or correct interpretation of them. And finally, usually there's some amount of demonstration that one and two imply that something has one property of God, or one or two properties of God. And then, from all of this, we go ahead and conclude that therefore God exists. You probably have a sense of some of the objections I'm going to offer to kind of this generic ontological argument. Before anyone steps up and says that this is a straw man, yes, I realize no one would make the argument I've just made. What I'm doing is merely categorizing a couple of the flaws that permeate a number of ontological arguments. Of course, the ontological arguments on their own are stronger than what I've just stated, because what I've just stated contains all of the problems. Well, each of the ontological arguments only contains one or two of these problems or objections. Let's take a look. So, complex logical claim disguised as a common statement whose implications are unclear. This is a problem for a number of the ontological arguments. The way one would object is to say that this isn't equivalent to that commonly accepted statement. It's a fallacy of equivocation. This is something that could be leveled at things like the conceptual ontological argument, in that there's a difference between us thinking about something that gives cancellation and something that doesn't. The modal ontological argument, the higher order ontological argument, in the sense that there is a difference between thinking that God is possible and thinking that a necessary being is possible. The claim can't be substantiated beyond an appeal to everyone believing this. This is kind of an ad populum fallacy. It falls in with the definitional, the modal, the mariological, and to some degree the religious experience, ontological argument. I'm not going to go through how each of these objections can be leveled with these arguments, because I've already done that. Check out the previous videos to learn more. Number two, a strange oversimplified version of an esoteric philosophical position. I kind of already mentioned where we're going with this. We can say this is not a correct or common interpretation of the philosophical position. The modal ontological argument in the sense of S5, the Mignonian ontological argument in the sense that Mignon doesn't agree with this argument, or didn't agree with the argument, rather. The Mariological in the sense that you don't need the compositional principle in your Mariology, and so on and so forth. The claim can be read one of two ways, neither of which imply the validity of a conclusion. So this is the case in a number of our arguments where there's kind of a 
ambiguous claim that is supported if it's read one way and implies the conclusion if it's read the other way, but neither reading will give you both. Things like the conceptional, the Minoanian, and the religious experience argument have this problem. And finally, there's some demonstration that one and two imply that something has one property of God. The big problem here, of course, is that the argument implies something that lacks most of the important properties of God. In the Mariological sense, this is, it implies that, sure, there's something like the universe that's the sum of all things. That doesn't mean that it's God. In the religious experience sense, it might be that, well, what we had a religious experience of seemed like God, but what's actually implied is that there's some moss in the cave that's making us hallucinate. And that the properties of God are poorly articulated, or don't correspond to the God of the religious texts. This is something that all of the arguments, except possibly the religious experience one, are going to have the problem of. It doesn't seem that this perfect kind of triune God, or the God of omnipotence, omniscience, all perfect goodness, all this stuff really is substantiated in biblical texts. Take a look at those objections that kind of exist here and there throughout. I think I offer a good one in the definitional argument at the beginning um, to see where that permeates. But one way or another, even if you've implied maybe one or two properties of God, it really doesn't seem that your specific God or something that doesn't really just look like the universe is implied. And finally, therefore, God exists. The atheist is never going to be obligated to accept any of the premises of the argument. Why? Because it's an ontological argument. In that, all it's relying on is pre-existing kind of philosophical conceptions that you might have. The argument might just show that you don't actually accept those pre-existing kind of intuitions. Therefore, if you don't accept the conclusion, all the argument has done is shown that you don't accept one of the premises, that in fact, you don't have that intuition, or of that intuition that you thought you believed, that sure, it implies that God exists, but maybe all that's happening here is that you have a really strong intuition that God doesn't exist or that you don't know God exists, so you should doubt your previously held intuition. As the ontological arguments rely on reason alone, all the atheist needs to do is deny one of the kind of highly speculative logical and philosophically intuitive premises in order to deny the conclusion or show that their intuition that God doesn't exist or their lack of belief in God is something that is more convincing than some preconceived intuition that they might have that has no justification. With that, we're going to close the door on the ontological argument for the existence of God. Check out all of the arguments. I presented a separate video for the arguments and objections to each of the arguments and a whole bunch on the modal ontological argument. Check those videos out here at carnades.org. Also check out my next series coming up soon where we're going to take a look at the presuppositionalist argument for the existence of God and put it into dialogue with kind of some famous philosophers and their positions on metaphysics. Watch this video and more at carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.